So hello everyone, my name is uh, Adrian David Chiok and uh, I am currently in Malaysia, uh, Johor Bahru, Malaysia. I uh, am, have been here um, for about five years running the Imagineering Institute, a research lab in Malaysia and uh, I'm currently also I'm currently a professor in um, I University, Tokyo, Japan. Um, so um, I will answer several questions which were asked of me. Um, so first of all, uh, how did I get into this field? Well, um, I, uh, <clears throat> I began to work about 20, 25 years ago on the field of uh, augmented reality, uh, where we uh, have the merging of the real world and the virtual world. And uh, I, at that time I was doing a, a project in Singapore. I was, I was, at, I was a uh, assistant professor at the National University of Singapore. And I got a very, uh, big grant to do a project for the uh, Defence Science Technology Agency there on uh, uh, soldiers to be able to have uh, augmented reality uh, in, in the battlefield. So, um, for example, to know their position and uh, the, the location of enemy forces and, uh, and, and the such. So, um, at, that, at that time, the kind of thing which you can do on a mobile phone now uh, needed maybe more than a million dollars of uh, hardware. So we, we made uh, wearable computers. Um, at that time we called them wearable computers. There's no such thing anymore because all computers are wearable. Um, so basically, um, uh, everything we did 20, 20 or 25 years ago can now be done easily on your mobile phone. And that's how far we've uh, progressed uh, with the technology. Um, so I, I, I started off in, in that way, doing augmented reality for the uh, military applications. Um, and then I started to think about how we can use augmented reality not just on not only for um, not only for uh, the visual sense so wearing glasses uh, head mount display but um, also to uh, use aug augmented reality for all of the other senses such as touch and taste uh, and smell so um, so I guess mixed reality is really mixing uh, all of our senses uh, with the virtual world. Uh, so first of all, to work on touch, we uh, made uh, systems such as uh, systems, uh, which for example, you could touch each other through the touch through the internet, uh, have hugging through the internet with uh, hugging pajamas. And we even made a device called a Kissinger uh, where you could uh, kiss someone through the internet. So uh, all kinds of uh, touch or haptics through the internet. And then uh, we moved, I moved into um, taste and smell. So where we put devices such as uh, electronic uh, ele electrodes onto the tongue and in the nose to stimulate, to stimulate uh, taste uh, as well as smell by using electrical current uh, and and in in this way you could uh, sense you, in this way in the future we, we can send taste and smell uh, through uh, the internet uh, using electronic uh, devices um, so that's basically the progression uh, that uh, my research has taken in uh, augmented reality. And uh, 
more recently, I think uh, uh, we realised that you this was this was designed for, for example, touch, taste, and smell through the internet, uh, but actually, it doesn't need to be a person that you are touching uh, through the internet. It can be a robot, uh, can be an AI. So we realize we don't necessarily want to need, need to or uh, need humans on the other side of the communication channel. Actually, honestly speaking, it doesn't make any difference really if you are, uh, for example, uh, hugging someone through the internet, uh, it doesn't make any difference from the uh, physical point of view if that other person is in fact a uh, AI or a robot. Uh, I mean, in terms of the physical point of view, uh, because it's just a, like uh, essentially pressure, pressure, transmitting pressure or force uh, onto your onto your uh, body. So that's how I think we got. Uh, I, that's how I think I uh, got into the area of uh, robotics and uh, uh, artificial intelligence. Is by I think one day having a thought that um, actually all of this technology doesn't actually need any humans. Uh, on uh, you, you can be experiencing. Uh, augmented reality and augmented vision, sound, touch, taste, and smell, and you can be doing it with a person, but there's not really fundamentally uh, or philosophically, uh, from from point of view of the actuation, there's not much difference between uh, a person or human on the other side of the communication channel or a, or a robot or a, a AI. Um, now, of course, I'm not saying that uh, this, got this, 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 I'm not saying that the AI is uh, equal to the human, but, but if you're talking about uh, the senses, touch, taste, smell, audio, visual, then this can be done by uh, AI or robot, so with e equal, almost equal kind of uh, uh, effect. So I'm not talking about the higher order communication of, for example, language or feelings or emotions, but just the fundamental senses. Um, and I think still that's a kind of uh, uh, something fundamental that we need to realize. Okay, so uh, that's basically a story of uh, very simple, simple story summary of 25 years of research. Uh, there's more to it, of course, but uh, I, I will, uh, you know, just basically summarize it as I have. Um, now, how do you? Uh, another question was how I received is how do you achieve a success in research and development on robotics and AI? Um, well, I think now you uh, really have to realize that um, uh, AI, uh, on the one hand, has come a long way. For example, I was, I just watched a movie a few days ago on the YouTube about how uh, Google's, uh, Google uh, DeepMind, they have a company called DeepMind. Um, and um, that that uh, you know the company uh, was is famous in London because they beat the champion of Go. Go is a game uh, like uh, a game from from like, like like a kind of chess, I guess, or checkers. But it's from it's from invented in China. Uh, it's very famous in Korea, in Japan, etc. Um, but they, they, their uh, AI could beat the champion of Go in Korea. 
And that was a huge breakthrough. But on the other hand, it's kind of obvious because anything which can be reduced to uh, kind of modeling or mathematical modeling uh, kind of obviously can, can, be, can be done with AI because computers are now powerful enough. You know, what might have taken, uh, you know, a hundred years or a thousand years before now can be done in a few minutes because computers are so fast, so powerful. So in some way it's really obvious. And I felt, I felt when I watched the movie that um, it's not really so interesting, actually. It's kind of obvious. Anything which can be reduced to mathematical modeling can, I, th I think, be done by AI um, as this was shown can be the best human player uh, in, in, in Go. But the domain of Go, although it's a very complicated game, uh, essentially is, is, is mathematical, mathematics and modeling. So, you know, the computer can model, uh, you know, a million, a million Go games, a million Go players and, and find the best solution. So on the one hand, AI is very advanced for certain problems, but I think still there's a long way to go on, um, you know, actual things which can't be modeled so much with mathematics. For example, uh, when you eat some mm, food, let's say you eat something like a hamburger, all right? I don't think you can really model that in mathematics, right? What, what is the uh, sensations of eating something? And then you go into the more higher order things of, okay, friendship and uh, comradeship and at, at, the, at the highest level, you know, love. Um, you know, all these things can be reduced to mathematics. That I don't think so. Maybe never can be. So, um, so I think a lot of problems can be done by AI, by robots. And a lot of problems maybe can never be done by robots or AI. Um, but if you're doing research in AI, um, I think there's two tracks. One, one track would be, um, do you want to do something practical? So in that case, you will do something like uh, Google's, uh, um, Google's uh, DeepMind uh, company in London you know, where they have a, they have specific problems um, and which, which can be mathematically modeled and then can be solved, right? So there's a lot of um, problems which you can tackle, which can be solved quickly. And I think that's one track. And then the other track would be to try to model, try to, try to forward the fundamentals of artificial intelligence um, so that it becomes more and more like uh, uh, human intelligence, right? So there's the famous Turing test, which I believe no one, still, still no one has, has been able to satisfy the Turing test, which he proposed in 1950s, uh, where you can, um, he, he said that if you can uh, talk to a, human and talk to a AI. And if you cannot tell the difference um, after, you know, half an hour or whatever, I can't remember the details now, but you know, then the Turing test would be passed. But no one has solved the Turing test. No one has really solved, uh, you know, uh, just natural language, uh, free, free natural language on, on any topic like a human can. Of course, if you're doing things like uh, booking a hotel or, uh, uh, you know, like uh, ordering food or something, then that's a specific domain and that can definitely be done by AI. Uh, driving a car, you don't really need humans to do that. that. That definitely can be done by 
Please uh, complete your presentation by five minutes. Thank you. Yeah, sure. Okay. Uh, okay, good, good. Um, so I think for the, the other questions about Nepal, and uh, I've been to Nepal twice. Uh, we had a conference there several years ago, I think 2012, and uh, it's a fantastic country. Love your country. Um, and the, the, the people are great, the food is great. Uh, I think that uh, for the Nepal government um, and Nepal uh, researchers and uh, the universities, focus on the software because you don't need a lot of money to do that. You just need brains. Uh, and I think it's more valuable for countries like Nepal to focus on the software uh, because hardware still needs millions and millions or billions of dollars and that's going to be done in, in America um, or China now because they've got a lot of money but uh, so for countries like Nepal uh, like, like Malaysia for example we are middle middle countries you know middle medium sized countries focus on the software you can make a lot of progress one person can make a lot of progress uh, with uh, just just the brain, just the human brain, and make a lot of progress. Uh, so, I, so, so I think focus on the uh, uh, software in in countries like Nepal. Okay, so I think that's basically uh, what I'd like to say, and uh, we're happy to take some questions. <laughs>